Hello everyone, this is Rocket Erase and I'll be talking about water pollution and how to purify water uh, using nanotechnology and we'll be starting off the series and I'll be presenting the series on YouTube as well as other uh, platforms where I can share just my audio so I guess you'll be finding this on SoundCloud as well so also share this with other people who might be interested in uh, knowing about nanotechnology and also the uh, application of it in water purification anyways let's start off uh, so beginning uh, this uh, series uh, let's talk about uh, the uh, the reason why nanotechnology is uh, can uh, be a promising field in uh, water purification in the coming days so first of all I'll be talking about uh, the nanomaterials which are being used uh, these days so and also why they are uh, important so why they can be promising so anyways uh, let's start off so we have uh, low dimensional materials uh, so uh, what uh, this means is that the particles are nano sized of course which uh, gives us an advantage of them being uh, very uh, low in dimension and uh, which 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 uh, also is uh, uh, which also helps in them being uh, uh, what do you call of high specific surface area so the higher specific surface area means that uh, specific surface area is nothing but the surface area of the material uh, divided by the mass of the substance it occupies so what I'm uh, what we can say is that a uh, spherical ball uh, which is uh, let us take a tennis ball and let us take a football so both of them have uh, different sha different shapes uh, even though they are round but they do have a, a, a different shape altogether nonetheless even if you take a basketball and if not a football so a basketball and a tennis ball are both spherical in nature but uh, what you can see over there is that the uh, surface area of basketball is definitely higher because it's bigger but when you start uh, dividing it uh, with its unit weight what you will uh, come across is that uh, the tennis ball has much specific surface area and here specific surface area is nothing but the surface area divided by the unit weight so that is what is SSA so it is pretty much uh, common when you discuss about nanoparticles they give you uh, these uh, uh, they divide these nanoparticles on the basis of SSA so make sure that you understand this uh, topic this concept and uh, moving ahead uh, nanomaterials uh, because they are smaller in size they have high reactivity and also they can be used uh, in applications where we require uh, higher detection uh, uh, you know where you would want uh, you know to detect uh, things with uh, higher precision and also the sensing and detection of these uh, particles the capability is higher when compared with the bulk uh, materials that we have today so these are the prime uh, important pr properties of the nano uh, materials which make them a very good uh, candidate for use in the environmental applications so of course environmental applications uh, water is a very uh, essential uh, topic in this uh, era because uh, we can see that the pollution is everywhere so the amount of fresh water that we have for ourselves is very very low so and it is uh, getting lower and with the rising population we need to put our uh, heads in into solving the issue of finding water for each and every person on this planet if not all the uh, living beings anyways moving ahead uh, we have uh, we will uh, I'll also talk about uh, what are called uh, metallic uh, nanoparticles which are uh, widely used in, in uh, water pollution uh, I'm sorry water purification so we have uh, metal and metal oxide nanoparticles like uh, silver, ferric oxide, zinc oxide and uh, titanium oxide as well. We also have uh, carbon nanotubes and nanofibers, graphene, zeolites and dendrimers. So I'll be talking about those in uh, 
the coming up uh, the the episodes that follow so even uh, over here i'll be talking about magnesium uh, nanoparticles in uh, in a few minutes so but before that uh, let's also uh, gain a small insight into why this is required why this is essential for us in this uh, present uh, in, in the present day so as industries are uh, as uh, economies keep rising up industries keep coming up and each industrial area and each city has uh, a lot of sewage that is coming out and uh, the and day by day uh, the necessity for uh, you know cleaning up the water and uh, discharging it into the lakes and rivers is becoming more and more important because waste generation has uh, been growing exponentially and people don't know how to deal with that so as uh, we have cities which are expand expanding rig- vigorously we need to come up with uh, several alternatives and uh, in the present uh, scenario water is uh, uh, treated in the three in three common ways which are chemical physical and biological uh, which that is a no brainer because uh, chemical doesn't uh, chemical uh, means nothing but using uh, chemical additives uh, which either uh, help uh, the particles to coagulate and settle down and uh, or uh, you know you can also have them react with certain substances that will neutralize uh, certain molecules which are harmful let us say some uh, some um, uh, molecules of arsenic or other uh, poisonous substances they can be neutralized and physical is nothing but the manual uh, it's not manual but yeah it, it can be manual as well as automatic separation of uh, the big chunks of waste products that are found in rivers and polluted uh, lakes and all that of course biology uh, biological processes also exist biological processes are nothing but uh, usage of bacteria helpful bacteria or other uh, organisms that will uh, instantly or slowly reduce the uh, uh that will reduce the uh, poisonous substances and clear up the water and of course we also have a lot of other uh, uh methods that are coming up for example we have photocatalytic oxidation which involves photocatalysis which is nothing but using the sunlight and the cat uh, and the catalyst which will release free radicals inside the uh, water uh, bodies which will help in neutralizing the poisonous substances we have uh, certain other uh, mechanisms such as adsorption or su- separation processing and we also have bioremediation and we'll talk about all this in the coming videos and coming audio clips so stay tuned and anyways uh, let's get ahead uh, so nano materials have uh, been suggested as efficient uh, cost effective alternatives uh, to all these uh, existing uh, and uh, the uh, olden methods so far because uh, they all they are uh, very much effective and they are fast uh, because of their small sizes they can reach any kind of spaces so you don't have to worry about uh, them not reaching anywhere or a zone being uh, partially treated uh, when you are paying or when you are expecting it to be uh, treated fully and also in the recent years uh, magnetic non- nanoparticles uh, has also risen so magnetic non- nanoparticles are like the subclass of nanoparticles which are magnetic in nature so you can control these uh, p- uh, particles using the magnetic uh, applications so uh, you can provide some magnetism and you can watch the particles behave the way you want them to and uh, spinel structure is a structure uh, where uh, you can find it as a crystalline structure so spinel structure uh, is a structure so these uh, nanoparticles which have cert- certain structure called the spinel structure has been uh, dominating the scope the scope of um, nanoparticles and water purification uh these days and we'll be talking about why they are uh, effective so 
let's get ahead and uh, let's also talk about uh, uh, the f uh, let's talk about why the reactivity and uh, the capability the sensing and detection is increasing uh, due to the applications of uh, nanoparticles all right so let's get ahead uh, we have something called uh, metal nanoparticles as i was telling in the first few minutes so among metal nan nanoparticles let's talk about the magnesium derivative compounds so magnesium nanoparticles are pretty much in use these days and let's talk about two certain uh, particles so the first one is magnesium oxide nanoparticle so these are oxides with spinel structure spinel structure is again a structure which involves uh, crystalline structures like tetrahedral and octahedral so these structures these structured uh, nanoparticles have a ssa of 25 to 50 meter square per gram and it is considered to have uh, this value is considered to be a very high ssa so as as i was saying ssa is nothing but specific surface area so and their diameter is very uh, small uh, it's in the range of 5 to 100 nanometers so magnesium oxide nanoparticles are pretty uh, useful and uh, they are effective biocides against certain uh, uh, bacteria so when you talk about bacteria there are two kinds of bacteria i mean two major classes at least so the two major classes involve uh, uh, bacteria called uh, gram positive and gram negative so gram staining test is a certain test where you stain the bacteria with certain uh, uh, alcohol or acetones and if you get the violet color it is called a gram positive bacteria and if you don't get any color but if you get the red color or any other color it is called a gram negative bacteria so in removal of both these kind of bacteria, uh, magnesium uh, oxide nanoparticles have been helpful and other than that there is also something called magnesium nanoparticles which are black in color and they are spherical and uh, as I was saying magnesium oxide uh, nanoparticles are spinel structure whereas these uh, spherical black particles are uh, of course spherical in nature and their diameters are about 20 to 60 nanometers and SSA is about 30 to 70 meter square per gram so that is also quite good enough uh, SSA over here so the gram negative ba bacteria that I was talking about can be of the type Bacillus megatarium and the gram positive is of the type uh, an example would be of the type uh, Escherichia coli so it is also known as E dot coli so it's, it's written as E dot coli so you call it E coli as well and E coli is a common uh, indicator of how the quality of water is you can find it uh, anywhere so if you have someone uh, working on water purification you can ask them about the E. coli content and they'll definitely talk about how it's uh, useful and how it is very important also it is uh, magnesium derivative compounds are also pretty uh, helpful in uh, you know removing bacterial spores like bacillus subtilis so these are certain advantages of using magnesium derivative compounds magnesium nanoparticles and magnesium oxide nanoparticles so further ahead in this series i'll be talking about various other uh, metallic nanoparticles as well as non-metallic ones we'll have uh, one by one we'll be talking about several others so stay tuned to this uh, series and also make sure that you understand each and every uh, concept and topic now I'll make sure from my end that I'll try to explain each and everything in detail so that you understand how nanoparticles are useful in water purification. So let us close this uh, audio for now. Uh, in the coming uh, videos I'll tell you in detail what all happens in each and every step uh, of purification. Alright, so this is Rocket Erase and I'm signing off from this video and I'll see you guys in the next video or audio or wherever you uh, watch this from. Alright guys, thanks a lot for listening. Bye bye.